for the graduate of 2017, Trent Gutierrez. Amen. Now, Trent, we're proud of you. We love you. You know, you. I'm your uncle, so I'm your favorite. I know that. But you're a great man of God. And uh, we want to present to you a, a special gift from the church. Before we do, because we got to make sure you're ready to receive it. Can you just testify and just tell people how much you love the Lord? Uh, I love the Lord with all my heart. Um, I've been raised in church since I was a kid. So y'all have always been my family and I love each and every one of y'all. So thank y'all so much. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you guys love this young man. He's stepping out into a, a new territory. So this is what I think we ought to do. Can, can we all pray for him? Mom and dad, you're in the house. I would love for y'all to come. Miss Abby, would you come? And we're just going to lay hands on him. Uh, I believe it's important that we take time to anoint the vessels of God. This young man is gifted and talented in a lot of things. Come on, grandparents. That's fine. Stand right there, Trent. And uh, I want you to stretch your hands this way. We're going to pray one for direction because he's got decisions to make for college and for his future. And also for protection and wisdom and guidance from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Father God, right now, we declare and decree that no weapon formed against this young man is going to prosper. Devil, you're defeated, and God is exalted in his life. Every gift, every talent. Lord, we thank you, God, that you get the glory and all the honor and praise. We thank you, God, that there's nothing impossible. There's nothing he cannot do that he puts his heart, mind, and strength to doing according simply because you work in him your word promises us God in our weakness we are made strong yes God he's going to have weaknesses yes Lord he's going to have temptations and trials but we declare in this place right now that everything that he encounters he will be an overcomer not because of his strength in himself <laughs> but because of the strength in you we honor you for his relationship with you as his father, as his king, and as his Lord. We give you the praise. And all the ch church says, amen and amen. God bless you. We present you with this brand new Bible and a card from your youth group. Amen. We love you. Give him one more praise. Let him know you love him. Amen. All right. Well, if you got your Bibles, June, John chapter 15. Verse 11, John 15, verse 11. Our text this morning, this is Jesus speaking. Somebody say, Jesus is talking. Jesus is talking. Yeah. John 15, 11, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says this, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, so your joy will overflow. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Somebody say Jesus' joy. Yes, your joy, say my joy, will overflow. Amen. This morning I want to speak to you from a subject. Guard your heart and you'll keep your joy. Guard your heart and you'll keep your joy. Father, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises, your faithfulness, your love, and your compassion for us. We give you the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. God bless you. If you find your seat safely, give him praise this morning for the word one more time. Amen. I have told you these things so you will be filled with my joy. It's important to know that Jesus recognized, even in the three and a half years of his ministry on earth, that people struggle with joy. Jesus dealt with even his disciples, Christians, people in the church. He dealt with helping people heal so that they could learn how to have strength in time of weakness. Jesus made it real simple and plain and clear that it would be joy that would make you an overcomer in times of defeat and sadness. Sometimes 
no matter how churched we are, we think Jesus and joy are opposites. Can I tell you this morning, Jesus and joy are not opposites. God and happiness are not opposites. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can't have joy. Doesn't mean you can't have your a smile on your face, have peace in your heart. Can I tell you this? Just because you lost a loved one or got a bad doctor's report or was have going through a divorce or a marital problem or of some situation that seems ca catastrophic, just because you're dealing with that situation in the present moment doesn't mean you can't have joy. And that's what Jesus is saying to his disciples in so many words. He says, I've told you these things so that you may be filled with my joy. How many understands there's a difference in your joy and his joy? Okay, because our joy many times is tied into emotion. I understand joy can be an emotional attribute in our lifestyle. When we got a raise, woo, we got a raise. We show joy and excitement, right? That's an emotion. By the way, we've been, uh, last, this past Wednesday, we talked about a little bit of joy and then we tied it into the heart and where we are in the heart. If you're missing Wednesday nights, you're missing out. We were saying, do I have my Wednesday night crowd, what do, do y'all think? We, we've been seeing some good things happen. The Lord is speaking. So I want to encourage you, come to Wednesday night. You'll know more where we're headed and where we're at on Sundays. But I, joy ties it all together. Uh, it, it is in, it, the, 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 when you first um, had your wife, which was your girlfriend at the time, and she texted you or called you or messaged you and said, hey, I just want to tell you, I know I haven't ever said it, but I love you. You guys know you, you just, you had to just pass out just for a moment because you just, you, you felt joy. Ladies, when your husband sent you or your boyfriend or whoever sent you some roses and, you, and all the office saw it and they just going crazy about this man, who, so, who sent you that? You just, you just got joy. That emotion of joy was expressed. Now this is, this is the difference between our joy and his joy. The same person that made you joyful <laughs> could do something that could hurt you. Their word said something, your boss fired you, uh, they gave you the raise, the husband that sent you the flyers, now he done left dirty towels and everything else on the floor and you really upset with him. Now the joy has been turned to, into anger. What happened? Your emotions have been flipped. Because our, our joy, our emotions are unstable. Can I get a witness? When, when we, that's why we can't live this life of holiness, godliness, and being a Christian based off of emotion. Because sometimes you're not going to feel like living the life. Sometimes you're not going to feel like praying. You're not going to feel like worshiping. Sometimes you're not going to be happy. Sometimes you, your face is going to look like uh, uh, it's, it's been beat up and bruised and it's turned upside down and it definitely ain't got no happiness to it. Looks like you've been sucking on lemons for a month. And that's okay. It's okay. There's grace where we need it. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. There's grace. There's mercy where we need it. We're not always going to have it together. Somebody said, where is he going with this? Can I tell you something? Jesus knew you was going to have moments where your joy wasn't going to overflow. Jesus knew you're going to have moments where you're depressed and you're down and, you, and you're, you're, you're frustrated, you're aggravated with, with those that are closest to you. And you, could, you would get affected and your emotions would run rapid. But listen to me. No matter where you are in life, the joy of the Lord will always be your strength. It will always be your strength. Not sometimes, not a little, not, a, not, not this, not, not on Wednesday, not just on Sunday. The joy of the Lord will always be your strength. Now right there, you shouldn't have patty caked. You should have given him praise because he's given you a weapon to be strong in a time of weakness. The joy of the Lord will always be your strength. And if you're going to learn how to endure you got to learn how to hold on to the joy that's in response of your endurance. 
We learn this according to scripture. If you're taking notes, I'd encourage you to do that. Hebrews chapter 12 and 2 said it like this. This is Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, look what he used. He used joy. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the Father at the throne of God. What, what, what was he saying? He said his endurance to finish what he started was for the joy that was set before him. Can I ask you something? What kind of joy would he have found in going through with the pain and the ridicule and the suffering of the cross? On the surface, what joy would he get out of that? Simple. He saw what you and I would be if he finished. The joy that was set before him. The joy he saw in the future that John would be delivered from drugs. The joy that he saw in the future from that Mary who lost her husband and almost gave up on life and was about to commit suicide. But she came into an old-fashioned church and they was preaching about the love of Jesus and forgiveness and deliverance and healing. And she came in and for repented of her sins and gave her heart to the Lord. Jesus saw her coming through to the altar. Jesus saw you being healed of blind eyes and being healed of deaf ears and being healed of cancer. Jesus saw, he said, the joy that was set before him. Can I tell you something? You're the greatest joy Jesus has ever had. You're the greatest joy that had he had ever created because he saw what you could be. Maybe not what you are today or what you've been in your past, but he sees who you can be. And because of that, he endured the cross. Can I tell you, sometimes you can't and you'll never get joy until you learn how to do some enduring you got to learn to endure you got to learn how to push through but watch it shouldn't be a life of endurance if you're not living a life of joy at the same time endurance and enduring something is not uh, settling We think if we endure it, we're settling. No. It might be a season of endurance that you're having to go through and you're having to struggle and you're having hard times and, and hard moments. But listen, there's joy coming. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. There's gonna be weeping moments. You can't just endure in a marriage if you're never gonna learn how to enjoy one another. Let me take you to another level, church. Somebody say, I'm the church. I'll talk to me, say, I'm the church. Some of you are the sleeping church. Let's wake up here in a moment. We can't endure church and never get any, never learn how to enjoy what God's given us and what God's done for us. If we don't create an atmosphere, my desire is to see an atmosphere filled in a place where people would enjoy coming to church, enjoy coming to worship, enjoy coming to youth group, enjoy coming to kids' church. Why? Because, yeah, they've learned to endure, but through their endurance, they've created a flow of joy that doesn't come from themselves, but it comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they've seen that this is life, not just going through routine. Eventually, you have to get through, the, through, through all the, the muck and stop just going through the motions. And you have to encounter a joy unspeakable and full of glory. There is a joy of salvation that we must tap into. Sometimes we lose or we forget or we miss out on the joy Jesus has given us because we don't realize the miracle he's done in our lives to save us, to deliver us, to set us free. And Jesus is teaching his disciples, the church, that he has a joy that will overrun and overcome uh, any and every obstacle you face. Somebody say amen. The Proverbs in four, chapter four, verse 20, listen to what it says. It's like, it's like a father talking to his son. As I read it, I want you to see it from the Father, Father God, speaking to you this morning. He says this, my son, 
Pay attention to what I say. How many of us has ever, have ever heard, but you didn't listen? You ever had your kids do that? He says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Now here's the instruction. Turn your ear to my words. Don't turn your ear to fame, success. Don't turn your ear to popularity. Turn your ear to my words. Let's find out why. Do not let them out of your sight, okay? Keep them in your heart. Turn your ear. Don't stop looking at them. Keep them in your heart. For they are the life, they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. You know what he's saying? He's saying, my words are the only thing that's going to get you through. And you will always be able to endure in hard moments so that you can reach the joy that I have for you. But it's going to be my word in your ear and my word you see in your eye through as you visually see my word working on your behalf. And then it's going to be as a result of it getting in your heart because that's where your belief system comes from. As you see it, you hear it, and you believe it. He said, there is something that is connected to that. It's going to, the words that I have spoken are going to give you life. And you're going to find health to your whole body as a result of it. Amen. God wants us to have his word. How many times did you read his word this week? Listen, we don't have no excuses. We got more word today then we got mashed potatoes and gravy. Come on. We, we got the word. We got it on iPod. We got it on YouTube. We got it on iTunes. We got it on iPhone. We got it on uh, iPads. Come on, somebody. We, you, can get, you can get it on CD. You can get it on, I don't know if you can get it on tape anymore, but you, you can get it in the iCloud. Look out, somebody. It can be up there and you didn't even know it. It's just the word. Radio, TV, internet. The word is everywhere. Somebody said, well, I don't read my word because I don't understand it. Well, man, get on Google and let Google help you understand it. If you can't listen to the Holy Spirit, we don't have an excuse. His word. David said it like this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. How do we think we're going to know our direction if we don't have his word? Wednesday night, we talked about how even in... Um, even God's word and endurance and struggles, God's word will light up a path, but it won't always light up the destination because we have to trust him by faith, right? So our heart, if it's going to get where it needs to go, we've got to learn how to hold on to his words. And when we are going through struggles, we are reminded many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers of them all. Many of the afflictions of the righteous isn't anything to look forward to, but where you find joy, many of the afflictions of the righteous, oh, that means I'm enduring. That's your enduring season. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, many of the afflictions of the righteous, many troubles, many problems, many trials, but the Lord delivers of them all. That's where his joy steps in. Anybody with me this morning? His joy. I need you to start having joy. He needs you to start having joy. Having joy. Holding on to your joy because the enemy wants to strip you of it. He wants to take you of it. That's why he said it and clearly it's plain as day. It's your strength. It's your strength. You won't find strength in more money. You won't find strength in a better wife or a better husband. You won't find strength in a better job. You won't even find strength in a better church. You find strength in my joy. And if you get my joy, nothing shall be impossible if you will hold on to my joy. Amen. Come on, give him praise right there for his joy. Wednesday night, we touched on this, and I want to touch on it again. Proverbs 4.23. Probably, I said this Wednesday night, probably one of the most important scriptures we will find. You ought to write this down. You ought to highlight it in your Bibles. The proverb says, guard above all else. Stop right there. Above all else. Before you do anything else, Trent. 
talking to you, buddy. You graduated. It's time to go to a new season in your life. But this is what the father would say. Above all else, what you say? Keep your heart from all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. I like the way that the NIV puts it. That's where it says above all else. It's there, I promise. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Whew. The heart, the heart, it's, 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 it's not our hair that matters. It's not our clothes that make us successful and accepted. It's, it's not about being chosen by everybody else and being popular and having what the world calls success. No, he says, guard your heart above all else, church. If you don't guard your heart, Everything that comes out of you is going to strip you of the one thing you need to make it in life, and that's joy. It's really simple. Jesus made this real plain and real simple. He said, if you try to find joy and acceptance in other things and other people, other things and other people, and life is going to let you down. But if you'll guard this heart, if you'll protect this heart, if you'll put some boundaries in your heart, People can't strip you when they try to. People can't keep you down when they're kicking you and tearing you down. People can't determine whether or not you're going to get up the next morning and be an overcomer or if you're going to be overcome. Jesus said, I have prepared a place for you. I have gone to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. Can I tell you something? He has a place for us and it isn't just in the, in, on the streets of gold. We don't have to wait to get to heaven to have a little heaven on earth. He already made a way for us to walk in deliverance walk in healing, walk in peace and joy. All we have to do is receive him by faith. This joy that I have, the songwriter said, brother, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Robert, I know you know that song. We'll sing it, but it's more than just singing it. We'll talk about it, but it's more than just talking about it. We'll even read about this joy. But this morning, I want you to do more than just read a scripture. I want you to learn how to start living it. Not just on Sunday, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Riley, the devil would love to steal your joy because you're a young man. You're going places and you're doing things. But can I tell you something? What the enemy has in store, God has something greater in store. There's a plan. God has a plan. And he tells us, my plan is not to discourage you, not to tear you down, not to hurt you, but to give you an expected end, to give you a future, to give you a hope. How many understands that his plan supersedes all other plans. His plan supersedes all other plans. We must guard our heart. I used this analogy the, other, the Wednesday night. I'm going to use it again. Some of us have guarded our homes more than we've guarded our, our, our hearts. We will put security systems in our homes to protect our physical and earthly things, but we haven't placed any guards in our heart to keep things out that shouldn't be out or shouldn't be in and keep things in that should be in. Wouldn't it be weird if you went home today and uh, I put a security system in your house and you didn't have the codes to it, but I did? That'd be weird, wouldn't it? You'd be like, why are you putting a security system on my house? Well, I just thought you needed to protect what you got and I'll take control of it. I'll, I'm not going to give you the security pin. I, I, I'll, I'll run it. That would be weird because I don't own your house. You do. Listen, we have to learn how to own what's ours. Your heart is yours. Your joy is yours. Your peace is yours. And if you don't guard your heart, 
Anything and everything has access to it. It ain't enough for the preacher to preach good. It ain't enough for the singer to sing good. It ain't enough for the Bible study to take place and the Sunday school to be taken to take in place and all these programs to be put in place for your kids. If you don't own it, it will never change. If you don't own it, you'll always be sad. You'll always be defeated. If you don't own, guard what you've got. Protect what the Lord has given you. Be faithful with what he's entrusted you with. And if you guard it, everything that comes out of it will be pleasing to the Father. If you don't guard it, I could take you scripture after scripture. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on, somebody help me with the word. The mouth speaks. You know what that means? If it's in your heart, it's going to come out your mouth. If it comes out your mouth, it's in your heart. If it's in your heart, it comes out your mouth. If it's in your mouth, it comes out your mouth, it's in your heart. There's, what he's saying, he's saying you didn't guard your heart. And if something wrong is coming out your mouth, it got in your head, got in your heart, and now it's coming out your spirit, out your life, out your choices and out your decisions. Is anybody getting this this morning? You want joy? Guard your heart. Stop letting people run over you. Stop letting people determine whether or not you're going to be happy or not. Can I give you some instruction? This is worth writing down. Your joy is nobody else's job. Your joy is nobody else's job. Christina, I can't make you happy. Miss Abby, I can't make, I know I'm good. I just take something. But I ain't that good. And I can't make you happy. On the flip side, I can't make you mad. You choose to get mad. Oh, I'm fixing to step on some toes, baby. Well, he made me mad. Really? He made you mad? I thought God made you. I thought God created you. In his image and in his likeness. He didn't make you. You chose. You got mad as a result of someone's actions. But watch. That's where joy gets all bumbled up and, 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 and pushed to the side because we choose not to be, have joy and we choose to have anger. We choose to be unforgiving. We choose to be resentful. We choose. But he hurt me. Okay, that's between you and God. Say, God, I put them in your hands. I'm trusting them with you and I'm not going to fix them. I need you to fix me. Jesus said, I'm giving you my joy to make up the difference when everybody else strips you, everybody else talks about you, everybody else wants to discourage you. When your joy ain't what it needs to be, my joy will cause you to overflow and you'll have more than enough and you won't be up and down and in and out. You'll be stable because my joy, it's unspeakable and it's full of glory. Somebody give him praise for joy in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, take a praise break and give him honor. Give him praise. He has joy for you today. Joy. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Stop letting people determine if you're going to be happy, Roy. Don't let it happen. Make up your mind. <laughs> well, he messed up my day. Really? This is the day the Lord had made. He didn't make the day. Stop letting people mess up your life. People come and people go. Husbands and wives are supposed to stay, but that's just how it is. You got to deal with it. That's part of enduring. Come on, Misty, help me out. Sometimes you got to endure that husband and endure that wife. But look at the joy that's coming. Keep speaking it. Well, I ain't got no joy in that. Keep speaking it. Endure it, but eventually start seeing yourself with joy. Start seeing yourself with peace because a life of just endurance, <laughs> whew, that's going to be tough. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just live a life of, endure, of enduring. I want to live a life of joy. And it can be from the youngest to the oldest. It can be from the most churched to the unchurched. We all have to learn how to protect and guard 
the weapon we need to overcome. And if we guard what's coming in our heart, the enemy won't be able to steal the strength that we need by stealing our joy. Amen? Proverbs 4, 24 and 25. How many things it's all right just go through this word? Amen? I ain't even got to my message. I've just been preaching my introduction. Praise God. I'm going to fly through it. Get ready. Proverbs 4, 24 and 25 says, Keep your mouth free of perversity. I'm an NIV. Keep your mouth free of perversity. In other words, watch what you say. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. What's he saying? Don't let your mouth mess up where you're going. Because if you keep speaking things long enough, he this, he that, she this, she that. I hate this, I hate that. You keep cursing this and cursing that. You keep doing that. Your mouth is going to take you in that direction. Today, when you start driving, look behind you the whole time you're driving forward. I promise you eventually you are going to hit something because you're going to go off in the direction. You're looking. All I'm saying is we've got to watch what we say because what we're saying is what's in our heart and what's in our heart is in our, coming out of our mouth. We got to start speaking. We are overcomers. I can make it. I have more than enough. I don't have little. I've got much. I am healed in Jesus name. Woo. Joy. Joy, church. I'm going to drive it home till you get it. Joy. You got to have joy. Your husband is a good husband. Your wife is a faithful wife. You've got trust. You've got uh, forgiveness. You have everything you need. Your kids are not hoodlums and devils and demons. They are perfect little, great, beautiful children that you've been blessed with to develop and help change. It's interesting. We want to scream, holler. <laughs> tear our kids down because of what they're not doing but if the truth be told we're screaming and hollering and tearing our kids down as a result of because they're doing what we're doing on a different level and then they start screaming and hollering back at us and they say I don't know why they scream and holler at me because they're doing what you do come on guard your heart Guard your heart. If you don't guard your heart, just anything's going to happen. Just anything's going to come out. Just any reaction's going to come. And you know what? If you do it long enough, here's the, here's the, this is the sad part. Suddenly, what's abnormal starts becoming normal. And it's normal for you not to have joy. It's normal for you not to have a smile on your face. It's normal for you not to have love for your husband, your wife, your, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle. It's normal. Because that's just what you've let in. Am I helping you back there, Philip? We all need this. Every one of us. We all need this. And if we'll guard, protect, we'll start getting different results. What he's saying is and many times what comes out of our mouth will determine how much joy we have in our heart. Write this down. If I got three points, I'm going to give them to you real fast. You ready? Number one, if you don't take control of how you feel, the way you feel will take control of you. If you don't take control of how you feel, the way you feel will take control of you. God's word will teach you how to do that. Don't just manage your emotions. Learn to control your emotions and feelings so you are not a slave to emotions. Feelings come and feelings go. Feelings are deceiving. Y'all remember that, that saying? You, if you own your emotions, if you stop giving other people control over you, if you guard your, your heart you, you put, and, and, and you put yourself in a place where you are going to be slow to speak and quick to listen, you're going to keep his word in front of you. My son, hear my words. Remember Proverbs, my son, hear my words, keep them in front of you. Stay focused. Don't be so moody that you forget the mission. Okay. Don't be so moody that you allow yourself to, to be up one day and down the next. Who was moody in the Bible that we can look at and pick on instead of ourselves? Let's look at David for a minute. David was probably the most moodiest person I've ever seen. <laughs> and I wrote down some things he would say in Psalms 22 and 2. He says, oh my God, I cried in the day night, daytime, but you did not hear me. 
and in the night season, and I'm, I, you're silent. I don't have it. I don't, have, I don't even know where to go. And then the next day, on verse 11, chapter, same chapter, he said, be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. He said, it's hopeless. They're surrounding me. My enemy's take, about to take me out. His mind was being bombarded. One day he would say, man, Lord, would you take my enemies and crush their head against the stone and their babies too? I mean, he, he just, he was so, he was re relentless and ruthless. I mean, his, his emotions were everywhere. But he learned how to fight back his, emo his emotions. Number two, learn to fight back at your emotions. Learn to fight back at your emotions. In other words, don't let your emotions control you. You can align your mood with your mission. If you start talking to your enemy more than you allow your enemy to talk to you, you will get different results. Stop letting the enemy control whether or not you're gonna be joyful. Stop letting the enemy control whether or not you're gonna to go to church. Stop letting the enemy control whether or not you're gonna accept and believe for your healing. Come on. The enemy would speak and, and discourage David many, many, many times. And because he was allowed his emotions to get in the way, he would be driven and sometimes cho choices would be made. Look out. Bum -ka -dum -bum -bum. Bathsheba. He was driven by emotion because he got in a mood. Come on. And one mood, one emotion can completely destroy your life and have your baby in nine months. Come on, somebody. His mood, his emotion, got him not only another man's wife pregnant, had a baby, the baby died, then he murdered the husband of the woman that he slept with. Why? Because he got in the mood. Your mood can make you or break you. Your mood can change your situation or totally destroy it. So we got to learn to fight back at our emotions. David did eventually learn to fight back at his emotions. He finally shook himself in Psalms 42 and 11. He says, soul, why are you downcast? He stopped talking about his trouble. He started taking control. He said, soul, why are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my Lord. What was he doing? He was taking control of his emotions. He was taking control of his circumstance. Then you find him in Psalms 103 and 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's talking to himself. He's owning his situation. He's owning what he's done, but he's trying to change what he's been saying. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives me of my iniquities, who heals me of all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth good things so that your youth shall be renewed like an eagle. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That's what David did. He took control and he got his joy back. And the Bible called him the man after God's own heart. It's your choice. You can praise or you can complain. You can praise or you can be sad and depressed. You can praise or you can be uh, overcome by your circumstance. You can praise or you can be angry. It's your choice. Listen. It's your choice and it's your results. It's your choice and you get the results as a result of it. It's your choice. Now, good water for some of us this is our joy Jesus said say come on Jesus said I'm telling you all these things so that you may have my joy and your joy might be full or overflowing but sometimes what we let come in our lives 
We don't have overflowing joy. We have half joy. Jesus knew that. And circumstances, situations come in our life. And what we started out out with clean and pure and holy. What I just did to this water in the natural is what the enemy does to us and to our joy in the spirit. Gets us depressed, gets us angry, gets us unforgiving, gets us defeated. But see, that's not the way we're supposed to stay. We're supposed to stay more. We're supposed to have joy overflowing. And when our joy gets full, or when our joy gets tainted, Tainted, if that's, that's the word. When our joy gets affected as a result of our circumstances, that's when his joy shows up. His joy says, I've got more than enough. His joy says, where you've been broken, keep believing, keep trusting. His joy says, I'm going to take you to a new place. I'm going to take you higher and deeper. And I didn't have enough water, if I, but if I would have, eventually that would be completely clear because his joy makes us overflow, takes us to a new place. His joy is going to make us overflow and take everything out of us that we thought we needed. He will flush it out of us because the concentrate will be more than of him and less of us. If you change the concentration, then the effects of the life that you've been living will change as well. Are you with me? His joy is for you. His peace is for you. His forgiveness is for you. His hope is for you. The only way I know to explain it to you is to tell you this. If you want it, you can have it. If you want joy, you can have it. If you want peace, you want forgiveness, you want a changed life, a changed heart, you can have it. All you have to do is guard your heart and you'll keep your joy. Amen? Let's give Jesus praise for his word tonight. Hallelujah. Can you stand with me all across this building?